Hello, and welcome to Credit Matters TV, the show highlighting Standard & Poor's analysis and global perspectives on the latest credit market developments. I'm John Sugden, Analytical Manager for Standard & Poor's U.S. Public Finance States Group, and I'll be your host today. On November 25th of this year, we released our survey of state other post-employment benefits, commonly called OPEB, in a report entitled, U.S. State OPEB Liabilities Decline Slightly But Continue Very Widely. OPEB primarily consists of retirement health care benefits and, to a lesser extent, life insurance benefits. Joining me today to discuss this is David Hitchcock, Senior Director in our U.S. States Group and the primary author of our report. Dave, welcome to the show. Thanks. Glad to be here. Dave, we, as, as part of our state criteria, we analyze um, debt, pension, and OPEB as, as other long-term liabilities. Could you put OPEBs in context of uh, first in size and, and how they rank relative to debt and pension? Sure. Just in terms of comparable aggregate liabilities, they rank comparably to debt and to unfunded pension liabilities. Um, we show total, in our survey that we've just done, we show total aggregate OPEB unfunded liabilities of about $529 billion, which is a relatively large number. And to put that in context, earlier surveys that we've done this year show about $488 billion in total net tax-supported debt liabilities for all the states and about $833 billion of unfunded pension liabilities for all the states. So it's comparable in magnitude, although less than the unfunded pension liabilities, but more than the, uh, the debt liabilities. So this ranks in between uh, pension liabilities and, and debt liabilities. Okay. Um, in your report, you state that there's been a decline in the liability, uh, which I think is, is uh, definitely a, a move in the right direction and a positive. However, you also state that the liability is, is still significant. Should we still be worried about OPEB liabilities? Yes, we, we were worried for a long time uh, because these uh, liabilities have only recently been identified and uh, most states fund them on a pay-as-you-go basis. So uh, the implication was that these would be growing over time, but we found that states have found ways to manage these liabilities, at least compared to our survey from two years ago. There was this very modest decline. Um, we do feel that if left unmanaged, these liabilities could continue to grow because most states are using pay-as-you-go financing. Um, there's a few exceptions. Some states are pre-funding the liabilities. Most of the reduction of the 3% in unfunded liabilities has occurred because they've either changed actuarial assumptions or they've managed the benefit costs uh, to be able to restrain those, which is a, a positive development overall to see stabilization of these uh, liabilities. Um, we think they can also uh, manage these by advanced funding in the future as state finances recover. Uh, there's perhaps greater interest in trying to pre-fund some of these liabilities too. Um, and so the ones with the very largest liabilities are going to have to address this. Uh, there's no question about that and continue to manage this in the future. Okay. And as your, um, as the title suggests, uh, these very widely um, is this an equal challenge for all states, or are there some where there's a, a bigger challenge than others? Uh, we don't believe that they, it is an equal challenge for all states. Uh, even more so than for unfunded pension funds, we find even greater variation, I think, between individual states in their unfunded pension liabilities. Um, and the ones with the highest liabilities are going to have to pay the most attention to this. Um, we found a very wide variation from state to state. Uh, about half the states have relatively small OPEBs and about half have much larger OPEBs. Uh, we found wide variations from $1 per capita in Oklahoma to $8,400 per capita roughly in Hawaii. Uh, and in terms of advanced funding, only seven states have trust funds that are more than 20% funded in their OPEB trust fund. Um, that's partly because some states offer very generous benefits and others are very stingy and offer very little benefits. Um, some of the states that offer very small benefits are just implicit benefits for retirees ages between 55 and 65. 
Others have gold-plated benefits for after 65 where the state picks up everything. So if you look at our report, it details some of these variations with some specific numbers, and I'd encourage listeners to take a look at that report. Great. So those are, in addition to the typical assumptions that go into these, which we know, uh, like pensions, vary widely from state to state, these seem to be some additional uh, differences in terms of the size of the liability based on the benefits and how they decide to, to fund them. And, and also in terms of actuarial assumptions, there's a much greater variation of actuarial assumptions for medical cost, inflation, rates of return, and so forth. So there's a lot of moving pieces in, in these valuations. Great. This is very interesting. Uh, well, this concludes our edition of Credit Matters TV. Thank you for joining us and be sure to catch Dave's report.